So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, talk about been there, done that, been in advertising for 25 years, and have just sort of uh, making the segue into academia. Um, and so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, first, I'm going to start with a quote from this man called Marshall McLuhan, who is a very great Canadian theorist, who came up with uh, the medium is the message. And another quote that he said that I really like, that I saw when I was young, was advertising is the greatest art form of the 20th century. And when I saw that when I was uh, younger, it was like, advertising is art? And you know, art is Michelangelo and Da Vinci, what does he mean? Um, and it was interesting, and then, uh, you know, it got me thinking, and now I definitely do believe that advertising is art, and I think art is advertising. Just because, you know, art, I believe, uh, is giving messaging, it's communicating something, and so advertising is the same as well. Advertising is not just necessarily for selling commodity products. Advertising is a way of getting messaging out. And advertising has been around for a long time. And I'm just going to show you what I consider uh, to be the first sort of large-scale advertising campaign that was done. And that's this, which is um, the Sistine Chapel in Italy. And if you look at this piece of art or advertising, um, you know, you can uh, look at it this way. So the client was the Christian church, the product was the Bible, the target market were the pagans, okay? And then the objective basically of that was to create awareness of the Bible. And the media was the Sistine Chapel ceiling or the billboard, you know, a billboard. So, um, and Michelangelo, I believe, was the first art director because art directors were paid by clients to create a message, to get uh, across a message, and uh, Michelangelo was paid by the Catholic Church or the Christian Church to get the message of the Bible to people. Um, Andy Warhol also, when he started his career, he worked in design and was an art director. And he said, as an artist, or an artist is somebody who produces things that people don't need to have, which is sort of another link you can uh, use to put advertising and art together. Because, you know, I just got my iPhone, and do I really need to spend 800 pounds on a phone? You know, but I did. Maybe it was because the advertising, I have no idea. But, you know, do I really need that phone? And Andy Warhol was very smart, and he adapted a lot of the techniques we use in advertising for his art. Look at the Campbell Soup Can piece he did, which was sort of commenting on mass production. Um, so my personal background is I'm an advertising art director, and I studied it for four years in Toronto. Um, and uh, I worked in Canada for a bit, then I got bored and then I looked outside of Canada and I moved to Mexico for over 15 years, I guess, 20 years, that's where we met. And also I do believe in branding. And in advertising we're, you know, we're into branding, we help get branded messages across. And I also believe in personal branding, which is basically applying what I'm doing for my clients, and I'm helping them get their messages across, and applying it to myself and my own personal brand. So this is my logo that I've created for my brand. This is how I identify myself visually. And um, these are logos of brands that we all know and love, that we face every day. And so the question is, is what is a brand? So uh, I found this definition, which I think is a good one, when it's applied to advertising and communication, which is the marketing practice of creating a name, symbol, or design that identifies and differentiates a product from other products, which I think is a really interesting definition. And um, I would like you to sort of look at that and start thinking about it and applying it to yourself. A brand sells people or tells people what they can expect and it differentiates your offering from that of your competitors. 
So again, you know, if you're looking for a job, you want to be different. You don't want to be like everybody else because you want to be selected. Um, your brand is derived from who you are, who you want to be, and who people perceive you to be. That thinking is what we apply to products, and I believe you should apply that to yourself. So from now on, I would like you to look at yourself as a brand. And ask yourself, what do, I, uh, what do I want, or how do I want to define myself? You know, do you want to define yourself as a creative? Do you want to define yourself as digital? Do you want to define yourself as a thinker, a writer, somebody who works in corporations, somebody who's a marketer, fashion, strategic, you're a researcher, you're a filmmaker, you're an animator, what type of animation? Then you need to uh, ask yourself, you know, where do, what are my goals? Are my goals to work in an agency? Do I want to work freelance? Do I want to work in retail? Do I want to work in social media? Do I work uh, strategic planning, shopper marketing, uh, magazines, news, television, editor, animation, film? You know, just put yourselves in uh, goals. Then you need to think, how am I going to reach my goals? Am I going to be taking courses, for example, if you want to be somebody who's more digital, then maybe you need to take some nights courses and, and focus yourself more on digital and learn programming and how to program, which is what I ended up doing to help myself transition from analog advertising to digital advertising. I had to learn how to program. You know, do you want to become an intern somewhere? Do you uh, want to change cities, which is what I ended up doing? Uh, do you want to enter festivals to get your stuff out there? Do you want to win student awards? Do you want to get published? And then also think about how you're going to reflect your brand through your clothing, through the way you present yourself, through the words that you use when you're in a job interview or meeting or speaking to people from the industry that you want to get in. I know in advertising we have specific language that we use in advertising. Uh, which I throw in there and I ask my students to do that when they're in job interviews because it makes the person who you're speaking to know that you understand the business. And I'm sure in film and animation, you have a specific terms and language for those fields. Um, and then think about how you're going to demonstrate your brand through a portfolio, through a printed book, or through a, a, film, a channel on Vimeo or on YouTube, through social media or your own personal website. Um, so, uh, I'm going to just show you now some examples of branding, a personal branding, and I'm going to start with what I know best, which is myself, and the way I define myself is advertising, art, and academia. Those are the ways I define myself in my personal brand. So, put that with my logo, so that message is coming across, and then I have my resume. So I haven't done a usual type of resume. I've created an infographic of my resume that talks about when I uh, first left Canada and when I arrived to Mexico and when I uh, went back to Canada again. So I try to present myself differently. So when it comes across people's desks, you know, they're hit by something that looks different. Then I have a website. And on my website, um, I've divided it into different sections, and I have, instead of saying new media, I've, I researched words, and I came up with the word emergent media, because that is a way to help separate me from all the other creative people out there. Then, instead of saying film, I use the word moving image. Uh, and then I have print and ambient, and then content creation which is something I do through my art and also through my advertising where I create stuff that gets talked about in social media, which is a certain strategy that I have. Then my site's in English and Spanish because uh, Mexico is a big part of my life, so it's bilingual. And also when I'm in social media, I put that on my site, so it keeps me current. Um, this is, then I have a section which is print and ambient, where I show the sort of print and, uh, print and advertising that I've done. There's, uh, you don't have Alka-Seltzer here in this country, right? You do? So some of you know what Alka-Seltzer is when you have a bad stomach. I put this there, which is Andrews, because that's what I put as a translation for the UK, because there's salts, right, to make your stomach better. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is a campaign that I worked on for Alka-Seltzer, basically to tell Mexicans, because we all know Mexican food affects your stomach a lot, and if you eat it every day, you know, Mexicans really do have bad stomachs. So, uh, and I'm sure yours is incredible here in this country, right? 
So um, anyway, so this is the first uh, ad I did in Mexico for Alcacel. So it was red hot chili peppers and then the cure. So very, very simple ad, problem, solution. And that campaign lasted for five years where we're playing off that structure. Then um, the campaign evolved and my big belief in advertising, because people don't want to see advertising. So you have to make it as easy and as simple for the consumer as possible. So I reduced the ad to just a very simple visual, which is this, where I put the tablets together with a hamburger. So you get those two pieces together. And you can look at this as a billboard and get it in two seconds. People don't sit and stare at advertising and try and figure it out. You know? So you have to make it as easy for the consumer as possible. Another one in the same campaign. And then this one, which I think is very timely with Christmas coming out. <laughs> and we did a TV commercial with that as well. Um, and now I'm going to show you, oh, another one, when we did a product extension with Alka-Seltzer, because uh, sometimes you can have a lot of gas that doesn't come out of your mouth, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so we ended up, they, we started selling this product, and this was the ad that we came out with here. That's my favorite commercial that I've done. It only aired for like four days, and then the client took it off air. For whatever reason, he came up, they came up with, maybe it was too controversial for them, but anyway, I like showing it. Um, then in Canada, I worked for a, you know Viagra? Well, you've heard of it anyway. At your age, you won't need it. But um, there's another product called Cialis, which, um, and in Canada, the rules, you cannot tell people what those type of drugs are for. So I could not say it's for impotence or sexual dysfunction. So when we did advertising for it, we couldn't say that. So we had to find creative ways of getting our message across. So um, we came up with this idea of showing places and then using a button that says here, 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 and here. And then down we had the logo with cialis.ca slash play. So we're getting that message across to Canadians. This was another ad in the campaign. Okay, showing all the different places now that you can have fun or play. <laughs> and then this one. So um, there's a lot of rules in advertising which kind of restricts us, but sometimes that gives you inspiration to, do, um, to be even more creative. Uh, also, back to my website, and I talked to you about uh, content creation. So I've done that for my advertising clients, but also I've done a personal art project um, in Mexico City. And what I did was I painted uh, messages um, regarding corruption and racism, and I used the advertising mediums to get my messaging out. So this is a billboard uh, that was put up in uh, Mexico City, and it talks about the corruption. And then uh, bus stops, there were 450 bus posters that I got put up around Mexico. Again, talking about corruption. Um, and then about racism, uh, same type of thing, getting them put up in big places around Mexico City to generate conversation about racism and corruption in the city, and it sent them to our website. Uh, we did 3,000 posters, put them up around the university and at bus stops, sorry, uh, subway stops. And Nobody knew that it was me. I hired this guy here, and he went out, and he was the voice, and he was the person that went to the galleries and spoke to the press who uh, were very interested in it. It was on MTV uh, seven times in Latin America, and the in see, it's not me, it's him. They interviewed him, and he spoke about the racism and corruption in Mexico because they wouldn't accept that a foreigner would come into their country and talk about those types of things. So I thought the best way to get my message across was to have like a pseudonym and hire this guy to do it. Uh, and then uh, I, after nine years, I decided to come clean and come out with it and say that it was me and I was sort of analyzing branding through art and just how the art world now, like, you know, I hired this guy and I paid him to say that he was an artist and did the work and everybody believed it. So it was sort of a social commentary I was doing on the art world. And it got on page two and page three of the, it's like the British, sorry, the Mexican Guardian, I guess you would call it. 
So that's sort of an art project that I do. Remember, I'm talking about my personal branding. Then I have a blog, uh, and here I, uh, I use it to talk about that I was coming here today. <laughs> so, and there's more stuff that I do. So I have my Twitter feed, okay, and again, selling this advertising art in academia, uh, my YouTube channel where I put the commercials that I've done, and then the commercials I have in my YouTube, I link to my website. So everything feeds off each other. Uh, Facebook page, this is not my personal Facebook page, it's one that I've made public. And then I can control the information that's on there and put it to reflect my brand, which is art, advertising, and academia. Um, and then I, the website called academia.edu, uh, and so I have that, but I'm using the same image that I have on my uh, other sites to help link myself and to push my brand. I'm even on SoundCloud. Um, to show that I really like good music, and uh, that also sort of helps with my brand. And uh, Behance is a great way to get across your portfolio. So if you want, and you can put film on there as well as just images. And then, of course, LinkedIn. So uh, that's me, but let's look at other people. So this guy is called Jeremy Bailey. He is a creative person, and uh, this is him on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, it's good because you can link it to uh, websites and other social media and film. So it, he's linked it to his Vimeo channel because he does a lot of art and does installations around Toronto. And then he also has his own website, okay? And all that is linked. And this is how Jeremy sells himself and presents himself as a creative person, a creative director in advertising and an artist. Uh, James Franco, the actor. If you look at James Franco, you know, you may know him from movies, but if you look at his social media, he positions himself as actor, director, and uh, writer. Okay? These are his three words that he uses to sell himself. And then this is him on his Facebook channel. And then he's on Instagram, always selling that side of him. And then who say? And again, here he's added another word, producer now. <laughs> he's everywhere. And then there's this uh, student. Uh, she was at the University of Westminster in public relations, and this is how she sells herself. And uh, she's just got a job at Batten Hall Communications, which is a social media company. And uh, her name's Jamie Spratt. And then she has her Twitter feed, um, which she only puts out certain types of tweets regarding public relations and advertising. And then um, she curates the archives of her company and the blog they have, and then she has her own personal blog. And so that's how she curates her own brand. There was a magazine article that came out last week in uh, you know, the London Evening Standard. They have a magazine called Style. This is online, but it's called The New Business Models. And what it does is feature four different uh, people who talk about their personal brand and how through clothing, through their uh, business contacts, through LinkedIn, through social media, how they position themselves as a personal brand, okay? Uh, even Caitlin, there was this article I found and it said uh, this guy from PepsiCo was giving a lecture and he said, uh, he turned to an example of Caitlin Jenner praising the way she managed her transition figuratively and literally as a brand. Okay, so Caitlyn Jenner, if you look at how uh, Bruce Jenner to Caitlyn Jenner has positioned herself, uh, it is definitely as a brand. Andy Warhol said, in the future, everybody will be famous for 15 minutes. And I think that's more true now than ever before because of social media tools. Um, a lot of people in blogging, uh, people who have uh, YouTube channels, you know, these young people in their suburban bedrooms in the States like Tyler Oakley, and he has like 8 million followers on his YouTube channel. More people watch his shows than a lot of American shows uh, in the United States. Um, so tools for personal branding. Well, there's Weebly, which is how I built my website, which is free. I built my website for free and I maintain it for free. There's uh, WordPress, which is uh, great, and there's two WordPresses. One is more complicated than the other, so make sure you research it well if you're gonna go in it. But that's a great way, and a lot of businesses use WordPress, and it's free. Um, then there's medium.com, which is a new 
site that has come out where you can publish. It has a great, uh, great for publishing like long Word documents where you can insert images. There's, uh, you know, you can do video blogging with YouTube or Vimeo. There's microblogging with Twitter, which you could use to sort of uh, position your brand. There's Vine, which is a great tool that's very much linked with Twitter. Uh, then there's Facebook. This is Jennifer Lopez. And then there's Behance, which is great for portfolio. There's, uh, you know, uh, Vimeo, I think, is great for filmmakers because they don't censor. I was censored off YouTube with the video that I made. Uh, and uh, I complained about it, and all my friends like, Carl, you should be on Vimeo. They don't censor there. So anyway, now I put my stuff on Vimeo. And then, you know, Instagram is great because it's visuals and words. And if you are successful at personal branding, you may get a job in advertising or whatever the career you're into, because I know there's people here in animation and film as well, okay? But personal branding, I believe, can help you in any field that you want. This is somebody who did um, a, a resume, but they did a direct mail. And what she did was she created this kit and she called herself, instead of Lego, she changed it to Leah, and then she wanted to get uh, a job in an agency. So she created a little figure of herself and sent it to prospective uh, people who worked in an agency. So when they came to their office, they had this little kit on their desk. And that was a great way of sort of her getting her message out that she wanted to work there. And she was successful. And even it got written up in uh, the newspaper, the Metro, which is the free paper that goes around the world. So um, is a career in advertising right for me? Well. Um, advertising is very, very hectic. Environment is not for everybody, that uh, I can definitely say. It's short deadlines, last minute changes, and dating is difficult. <laughs> when you go to work in the morning, you have no idea when you're leaving at night. So you are constantly, and I'm sure that applies to other professions as well, and so you usually date within people who are in your same profession because they get it. You know, they get why you're not having an affair, but you are, you know, working late. You really are. <laughs> um, it's very high pressure. People have lost their jobs in advertising over failed advertising campaigns because a client pulls their ad dollars or pounds because they weren't happy with the results and the campaign didn't work. So usually the last in is the first out. So it's a very high pressure business, but I thrive on it, love it. And I would, if I came back again, I would definitely be in advertising again. Um, and there's this guy called David Drugger, who's an Australian, who's done really well. He has a big office in the States, and he uh, does really, really amazing advertising campaigns. And he said, when he's interviewing for people, I'm looking for talent, but also enthusiasm and restlessness. I look for people who are fascinated by the broader world, not just advertising, which I think goes on to what you guys were saying earlier about when you go for interviews. It's not just what you know about that specific job, it's who you are and what you are as a person. So personal branding can help with that because if they like you, they will definitely Google you or go on social media. Um, so what do I look for when I hire interns? Um, people who know pop culture, live theater, galleries, books, what are the top 10 iTunes chart, uh, songs, fashion, they read newspapers, magazines, they travel, and you don't have to travel around the world. You can just travel in your neighborhood, just understand different people, have new experiences. They know SFX, special effects. They understand audio, the difference between analog versus digital, and why there is a difference, and why sometimes I would prefer audio, uh, sorry, uh, analog audio versus digital. They understand software, you know, why HTML is different than Flash, and why HTML is winning. Um, they understand new devices. They understand trends in all age groups. I had to do a campaign for tampons for 13-year-old girls in Canada, and I know nothing about that subject. <laughs> but I had to sort of learn, and then I discovered Justin Bieber, okay? Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you have to have that capacity of putting yourself into other people's heads so that you can understand. You have to question anything because you never know when you're going to be inspired for an idea in advertising, for uh, in the video game industry, or in animation. You know, inspiration's everywhere, and you need to feed yourself. So, if you like, you know, ads like this from Benetton, 
which I think is very a great social media ad that's uh, you know getting a great message out there. This is from Brazil where they built a huge Sprite machine, but it was showers. So when you're at the beach in Ipanema, you got hot, you would go there and water would come on you and refresh you, not Sprite. Uh, this is from Coca-Cola, made in China. Beautiful ad. China's doing really, really well globally and uh, becoming capitalist, I guess, putting capitalism and communism together. And they created this wonderful ad without words, just a very simple visual. You get to work with celebrities a few times. Uh, and then this one, this is a campaign from Brazil for dog food. <laughs> you know? Great, love it, it's so, so simple. Um, so anyway, if that excites you, then uh, you know we're waiting for you in advertising. Um, and that's me on social media, which I just said, and my hashtag at the bottom, and that's it. So thank you very much, it's been a pleasure.